first thing uh, I'm going to confess is that about whenever it was, five years, seven years ago, when did PlayStation 4 come out, Shid? 2013. Seven years ago. I was a sceptic and I wondered whether there was space in the market for a new PlayStation and indeed a new black uh, Xbox, given that I've um, been a digital person for many years and I just couldn't get my head around why we would be doing this stuff. I was completely wrong, so very, ha very happy to admit that I'm wrong, was wrong. And I'm asking the same question again today, really. We've got, you know, we're in the middle of the global, are we in the middle of the global? We're in a global pandemic. We don't know if it's the middle or beginning or the end or whatever. But why two new consoles from the two big, two of the big console, two of the three big console manufacturers, i.e. Xbox and PlayStation, why, why guys? Bruce? Um, about 2009, uh, I was in San Francisco uh, in a booth at the back of the MoMA Theatre uh, the night before GDC with an audience filled with press. And uh, Steve Perlman, our CEO, and Mike McGarvey, our COO, stepped out on stage to announce to the world that this would be the last console you would ever buy. <laughs> it was an amazing event. Uh, it changed the, the idea that games had to be run in a big PC or had to be run in a console. They could be run from anywhere. And we were also just starting at that time to get traction with mobile devices. iPhone, Android was really starting to gain. And I think the that moment was very defining, particularly for what are we doing? What is the content? Where is it coming from? And we suddenly saw, I think Sony were looking at this, Microsoft was looking at this, Nintendo's looking at this. They're going, oh my God, what is this thing? What does this mean for us? We're just about to release PS4. We're just about to release Xbox 360. And all of a sudden up pops this tiny little box that we're never going to need a console again. Why are we all doing this? But in reality, the, the experiences that we're building are not just about those machines. They're not just about those consoles. They're about the environments we build. They're about the social communities we build on top of them. They're about the content that goes with them. And really all of these experiences are content driven. It doesn't matter whether it's a PC or it's a, a cloud machine or a, a console. It is about where is the content, where is the content I want to play? Where's the content I want to engage with? And what are the things that I want to, to be a part of? And that sort of last console you will ever buy moment sort of skipped over the, at the time, we were just another channel. We were just another distribution channel. We weren't giving you something you couldn't get elsewhere. And I think here we are over a decade later cloud gaming is still in that world, right? We still haven't given cloud gaming that defining moment of this is a place for you to go that gives you something you can't have anywhere else. And so it is still an ecosystem. Consoles are an ecosystem and they're incredibly powerful devices and they each bring their own strengths and weaknesses, but you go to your ecosystem to have the experience you're looking for. And cloud isn't doing that for us yet. That's really, really interesting. I mean, I, 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 that's really cool because actually you've kind of nailed it there, the bit that I was missing. I only worked in the games industry all my life and I've still got that bit wrong. Um, Shahid, what, what about, uh, what do you think with, 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 with regards to the new PlayStation? You know, what, why? Same reasons, different reasons? Everything Bruce said, uh, and I could stop there, but I like the sound of my own voice, so I'm going to continue if that's all right. Uh, because it's a conduit for experience. All of these things are a conduit for experience. And the question is, will the PS5 deliver a superior experience to a PS4 or other competition? And we can see plainly from the demos that it can. Yeah. So there are several vectors for the improvement and the enrichment of experience. Graphics technology, which Bruce knows a tremendous amount, is one area, and it's an area that Polystream 
leverages in a very unique way. I won't sell Polyscream. I'll leave that to Bruce. Um, but there's no doubt that the graphical sophistication in both the next-gen consoles is an incredible leap forward. If you think back to the time of PS4, PC was slightly ahead at the time of launch, and you had a cheap box. Where we are now, the AMD chipsets that have recently been announced for PC are catching up to PS5. Yeah. And that's the first time that's happened to console in a very long time. So to my right, I'm going to point one way, and Zoom is going to show me this reflected completely the other, is a 48-inch OLED TV, which is 4K and runs at 120 hertz. I've never had that before, but once I connect a PS5 to it, once I get one, it will deliver me richness, smoothness, immersion, the likes of which I've never experienced before in my life. Is that worth paying 500 quid for? Oh, totally. Yeah. If you're into video games, that's totally worth paying for. In fact, the cost is entirely incidental. If you think about it in terms of subscription, that's two or three subscriptions for one device that will deliver experiences. That's what people buy into. Yes, Bruce is absolutely right. Community is essential. Where do you go to meet your friends? And Jim Ryan has rightly said very publicly recently that the reason PS5 is launching into a much better environment than the PS4 did, never mind the fact that the PS3 was, well, eventually a kind of success, but let's not go there, is because now you've got 100 million connected players. Yeah. And who are they connected to? I mean, until the time we have true cross-play, they're all connected to other PlayStation 4 players. Now, where are you going to go as a PlayStation owner? I don't think there's going to be an awful lot of crossover, just as uh, Democrats will probably always vote for the Democrats and Republicans will probably always vote for Republicans with very little shifting. The same is likely to happen with the consoles this time around, simply because all other factors put aside, their friends are yeah. there. Yeah. They're already there. So experience, the conduit for experience, and what Bruce said, the fact that there is an ecosystem that's already in play, and that's what they're building on top of. So what's going to happen? You're going to have more fun with your friends. You're going to have deeper, richer experiences with your friends. I think it's a perfect, perfect opportunity for, for PlayStation to grow their market share, but for, for Xbox as well.